Alright, so welcome back guys and welcome to your first time here. I'm Vision here with Bon Entertainment bringing you guys another video. Today we're talking about the 100, more specifically two characters from the 100, Monty and Harper. Now if the 100 is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would miss the more 100 related videos from me moving forward. Now let's begin. Like I said, I want to talk about Monty and Harper today. Now these two characters, I feel like, and maybe it's just me personally, but I feel like these two characters were really overlooked in a TV show and honestly deserved a lot better than what they got throughout the series. Now I know a lot of people talk about Lexa deserved better, but I'm talking about these two characters today because I honestly believe that they were treated horribly on the show. And yes, I know people don't like what happened to Lexa, this is, but I'm talking about from this an entirely different angle. Because when you look at the character of Monty, he was a main character. He was in the opening credits. Yet he bar barely ever did anything and he kind of felt like he was second fiddle to Raven. Now I love, I like Raven. She's a great character. However, the one thing I think that kind of ruined Monty for a reason is how they, how they did Raven. Because I feel like they upped her to a level of smartness where like she could fix anything. I mean, her and Monty relatively are about the same in regards to science and, you know, stuff like that. Yet, they always gave it to Raven. And I feel like she overshadowed Monty in a way. In which Monty, ne Monty never got to do anything. Now, yes, Monty had some things with Jasper and everything. But even then, it, he didn't really do much. He was just more like, again, second fiddle to Jasper. He, he never really did anything. And it always frustrated me. Because this guy's a character. He's in the opening credits. Now, I know a lot of characters aren't, like, the main dynamic characters. And some are just, you know, the static characters that push plot forward. However, Monty just felt like a character that just stood around in the background. And it even frustrated me more leading up to his death where they just kind of... He wasn't doing much. I mean, even in season 5, yeah, he had that one moment with the, where he tried to stop them from going to war... With the plant, however, other than that, he didn't do much. And it frustrated me, because this is a character that's in the opening credits, yet they do nothing with him, barely. Again, he did get some smart moments, some of his good stuff was in Mount Weber. But at the same time, he didn't do anything. Even season 3, they kind of tried to do something with him and his mom. But I don't know, it, it's still, even then, it just felt like it wasn't enough it still felt like even though he was given stuff it, he still felt even then like he was second fiddle to Bellamy and I, I just didn't like what they did there it just it just d didn't gel right with me and again I don't even remember much from season four except for him trying to get Harper to go to the bunker with him other than that I don't remember anything from there Season 2 and 3, I feel like he had some good stuff. One, he, I, one is one of those moments where I'm like, he, I don't even remember half the things he did or if anything. The only thing I remember is him being captured with Clark. That was about it. And I don't know. Season 5, leading up to his death, he didn't, he, again, he was shafted. And then we got Harper. Now, I think Chelsea Reist is an amazing actress. I think she did really good in the role. And they gave these two a relationship, and I also got to say, I think between it, every relationship on the show, I think Monty and Harper's was the most realistic. Because I don't believe anything about the Alexa and, and Clark relationship. They fell in love in like a week, and I just don't believe that. I believe that's entirely bull. And then you got Lincoln and Octavia. Eh, that one's sort of alright, but still, I feel like they rushed the relationship in a bit, where like he, she fell in love with him way too quickly. Whereas these two characters' relationship was built up from season two, and then you got them in season three, they're starting to form a b better bond. And then by season four, they're pretty much in a relationship, which I like. They finally, they kind of took it slow. They didn't rush it like with so many other characters on the show. So I really did enjoy that. However, while Harper was there, now I know Harper isn't a big character, but I feel like she still didn't get enough screen time or do much. Even Miller gets a lot more to do than Harper ever did, and that frustrated me even more. Because Miller is just like, a soldier, whereas she is the love interest of one of our main characters, and yet they don't do much with her. I don't. I can't even remember remember 
really any memorable moments of her. And I feel like even though she's a side character, she should still have at least a few memorable moments. And that's what frustrates me with The 100 a lot. Is a lot of these characters, they have potential, but a lot of times they're overshadowed by other characters who have been pushed up in power so that they overshadow other characters. And this is not me being sexist or anything, but I feel like they do it a lot more with the female characters. And I don't have a problem with that. I'm all for strong female characters. However, at the same time, you don't push them to a level where they outshine other characters or overshadow other characters. Even even if it's a same sex, I don't care if they overshadow another female character. That's fine. Or I don't like that either. But when they overshadow someone who's a main character who could have potential... It just looks bad, and I, I hate when shows do that, and again, I don't have a problem with independent, strong women, but I don't think that you should be giving them so much power where they outshine and overshadow this other characters on the show. And I feel like they could have done something there with Harper and made her a very strong female character. However, again, they just kind of shafted her, which frustrated me more, because it's like, Again, this is a character who had potential, who could have been this big character, but she just kind of had her there. She was in the background, and I don't know. And then you get to season five, and again, these two characters didn't really do anything in season five. And at least by that point, they had a full-blown relationship together because you had that six-year time jump. However... It frustrated me more when they decided that they were going to stay, not going to cryo, and live out the rest of their lives on the ship. And I didn't really like that. I felt like it was just, I don't know, I get what they're going for with characters having like the happy ending to their lives and actually being able to live a full life. However, I didn't like it because it felt like you took these characters who you didn't do much with. And it's like, here, you got some deaths to make it look good in the finale. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, I get what they're going for. They wanted a very emotional, touching moment. But I didn't feel that way. I felt more angry that they killed off two characters that I felt were good but didn't get much to do. And I don't know. Even with their son, Jordan, he doesn't do anything. He he's does nothing. It's like, they want a legacy character for the, these two characters. However... Even the son is like doesn't even do much, it, it, and I know it's only been one season with him, but it just I don't know it just frustrates me even more that they do that because it's just like why, I would I think they should have survived more and done something different with these two characters. Yes, they could still have um live out a happy life. Maybe they stayed awake for at least a couple of years, realizing that the Earth won't be survivable again, and then go and cry. Like, that is a better thing to do. And I'm kind of frustrated that they didn't do that. Because, again, they could have been very useful in Season 6, which I think is a very bad season. And I'll get into a, a review for that season hopefully soon. But I just didn't really like it. These two characters were very badly treated. And they deserved a lot better. They deserve to get the screen time. They, they deserved to get scenes that are memorable. They deserve to have a better way to be treated a better way on the show. And it just didn't happen. And I get people might not even care. They might think, oh, well, they're side characters. They don't matter. But to me, these are two characters that have been around since season one. And yet they still don't get the appreci appreciation that they deserve. Like, again, Monty was a main opening credits character. And yet he was always being overshined by Raven. And again, I feel like they made Raven too smart for her, her own good. In a way that she these other characters like Monty, when they needed something that could, you know, rely on him. They're like, oh, we don't need him. Let's just go to Raven. So that just frustrates me because it's just like... Raven shouldn't be able to do everything. She shouldn't be like the Swiss Army knife of a character where she can just pretty much do everything in regards to science and mechanics. That shouldn't be how the characters run. They should have shared it equally between these two characters instead of giving it all to Raven. And again, I, I'm not, I don't have any issues with strong female characters, but they can't outshine or, you know, overshadow 
of our characters already are male or female. That doesn't matter. It just don't overshadow characters. And I think that's, again, another issue that The 100 has. Is that they take these characters that could be strong characters. But overshadow them of other characters that just don't. Just are too powerful of a character in a way that you don't need any other character. And I and I don't like that. Even like when you got a character like Octavia. And you make her a strong warrior. When she can take out a whole group of conclave warriors. It makes the other soldiers look weak. Like if she can take out a whole... 12 other champion grounders like what's stopping her from like taking out the rest of the guard like it it makes you wonder why are they overpowering these characters so much where they're easily able to take out these other characters or easily able to do things that other characters should be doing it's just I don't like it and it just frustrates me more but let me know all your thoughts and opinions about it in the comment section down below yeah, guys, those are my thoughts and opinions regarding the characters of Monty and Harper on the 100. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That way, you miss more 100 related videos from me moving forward. And you can go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which are linked in the about section on my YouTube channel. As always, it's been Vision here with Boy Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.